the system. Do the shunt work done. Minus FA naught, CP naught. T minus T naught minus the heat of reaction at the reference temperature. Plus delta CP. And so it was a pretty long equation. This is a heat balance or an energy balance. that we, oh sorry, some, some terminology definitions. These are terms here, the Q is the heat flow in and out of the system, shaft work done, FA0, those are the usual meanings. Uh, some terms that might be a little bit uh, new for you, let's just define those here. CP0 is equal to the ratio of the flows at the inlet of the reactor times CPI, so the capacity. So let's just recap, theta i is a term we saw about midway through this course, let's define as the flow of species i at an entrance relative to the flow of a at the entrance. So the ratio of the molar flows, that's what we had from before. Uh, T is the reactive temperature. multiplied by the heat capacity of the heat transfer medium, multiplied by T 
envious 1 minus t envious 2. So if we just do a, a dimensional analysis here below that, that kilograms per second heat capacity is joules. So that gets things like you got in the usual units of joules per second. energy terms, energy flow terms, Q dot over here in terms of the mass flow. So this derivation is simply, simply an enthalpy balance between the heat being picked up by the heating fluid. This Q dot over here is the heat being transferred into the heating fluid. Those two heats must be the same. Those two Q dots must be the same. We can equate them and simplify solve for t and 2. It's a very, very messy equation, clearly because there's exponentials in here involved the moment we start to solve for t and 2. But we can do that, and um, it is in the course textbook, so there's no point in me writing out that equation that's fairly messy, because the very next step is to simplify it a little bit further, and if we do make that simplification, further, we get an equation that we will use quite frequently, u dot is equal to u a times temperature minus t ambient minus tank temperature. Now I will note here that this simplified further does, does involve an important assumption. So if I just run out of space here, so I'll only just add it here. There is an important assumption regarding that. And that is that MCP of M of the heat transfer medium, the flow rate of this coolant, this mass flow of the coolant in kilograms per second, is high enough that the temperature difference between the inlet and the outlet of T ambient 1, the inlet and the outlet of T ambient 2, is very small. High enough that temperature ambient 1 is approximately equal to temperature ambient 2. And we'll just call that T A and B. Okay, so notice here that this simplified formula here in the green box is only referring to T 
TA and B not to TA and B1 or 2. It's just an antenna temperature. We can do that because we're saying we're flowing our coolant or our heating transfer medium in here so fast that the amount of heat picked up by that medium is relatively small so that the outlet temperature of that medium is not much different from the inlet temperature. And that's true for most and, and many practical situations. And the main reason why we, we make that assumption is because it allows a bit of simplification up here with this formula. Our basic formula that we're starting off with. So let's make a note here then uh, we take this and then sub in that Q dot is equal to that heat transfer area multiplied by the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by T ambient minus T. So sub, sub in that. Also assume that delta Cp is approximately zero. Okay, so this term over here, delta Cp, is relatively small. So compared to the other terms in that equation, delta Cp is small. And that uh, I will show in the example tonight is a fair assumption in many situations. And assume that we've got no sharp work. So uh, under those conditions, we derived in the, in the class on Thursday last week that we could write the following. <laughs> Cp0, 1 plus kappa, which is a new term we introduced, and I'll define that again. T minus Tc, another new term we introduced. So the two new terms we introduced last class, kappa and Tc. I'll look at those in a minute. That's equal to the negative of the heat of reaction. It's at standard conditions multiplied by constant. Consider a CSTR. If we look 
look at some of the properties of this species, we've got A, we've got B, and we've got the inert I. So we can look at a few things. The B flow is uh, 1.3 moles per second of A. There's no feed of B, and the inert comes in at the same lower flow of as A is. Capacities. This is the P for these are 1, 2, 5. For B it's 160. And for the inert it's 85. And all of these are in joules per mole held. those feed rates. We're told also that uh, U times A U times A, that product in that CSTR, we don't know the individual values, but jointly UA is 560 <coughs> joules per second Kelvin. The ambient temperature of our heat transfer medium is 300 Kelvin. The uh, <coughs> tau for the CSTR, again, we don't know the volume, nor do we know the volumetric feed flow, but we know the ratio of the tau, which is a, a far more useful number for CSTRs in many instances, is 10,000 seconds. So that's the residence time in the system. The heat of reaction is um, negative here, so it's exothermic, and it's 31,400 31, joules per mole of A. The heats of reaction are always with respect to a certain basis, in this case, moles of A. Other information we need is the, heat, the rate constant, which isn't a constant, so it's K is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. The minus one, and that's at 350 Kelvin. So, if we need it at another temperature, because this is a non-isothermal system, we can get that by using the activation of NGE, which is 16,700 joules per mole Kelvin. Quite a bit of physical property information. Where we're after, what we're after with this problem is to find the outlet temperature of the reactor for a given. What is the outlet temperature if we know what T naught is? So we know what our inlet temperature is going to be. What is our outlet temperature going to be? Once we know our outlet temperature, what is the conversion point? So. In these systems, as we described last class, there's very much um, multiple things that we're interested in. But if we've got non-isothermal behavior, we've got temperature and conversion immediately as two of the most important outputs that we're interested in. So what we're going to explore here in this class is to find outlet temperature T. This is one thing that I'm interested in, given T naught. So, what I'd like you to do is spend spend a minute, about, spend about two three minutes, in fact, thinking with the person next to you, perhaps if you or on your own, if you like, what is your strategy going to be to find the outlet temperatures? Okay. So we're looking at our six-step process. Several of you had asked in the course evaluations midway through the course, you wanted to see more examples of plan, explore, define. Sorry, define. Explore, plan, and then do it. 
and then check and generalize. We're going to go through those steps. What I'd like you to do is spend a few minutes planning your strategy for getting the outlet temperature T. This question is uh, pretty much a similar question to a previous final exam. So what would be your strategy to calculate that outlet temperature T given that information and given these formulas we covered last class?
So we've got some good suggestions here at the beginning is to calculate cathode NTC, get CP naught, then we can start to use this equation. But here's one problem. This equation has both the unknowns we're looking for, both temperature and inversion. Okay, so what we have is the requirement of another equation. We've got two unknowns, one equation, we need to supplement it with another equation. Any suggestions? Which equation is that? We need the design equation. So use the design equation. Okay, and then we might, we might have uh, some, some luck there with two equations and two unknowns. Let's take a look at that. So the design equation for a CSTR is B is equal to FA naught times X over minus RA. FA naught, we're not given information, oh, we are given FA naught, so FA naught here is 1.3 moles per second. One thing we can do though is because we're given conversion is we can try to write out our concentrations in terms of conversion and our rate in terms of conversion. So what we can look at then is putting our FA naught in terms of CA naught and conversion and, and Q naught I should say. The other reason why we want a Q naught in this equation is because we don't know volume but we do know tau. So tau is V over Q naught. So let's sub in the fact that FA naught is equal to CA naught times Q naught. That's CA mod Q mod multiplied by conversion X. Rate for a first order reaction is KCA. CA, we saw from earlier classes, is CA mod 1 minus X. So my rate here down is K CA mod 1 minus X. So what I can get from, from simplifying this is that tau is equal to V over Q naught is equal to 1 over lowercase k 1 minus x conversion. So I get that simplification. Okay, multiple reactions in a CSTR. What's the rule with multiple reactions? <coughs> you write out your design equation for every reaction. So you'll have one equation is equal to another equation, which is equal to another equation, and then your unknowns will be complicated. X in the numerator. Let's take a look. So C in all, Q crosses out K. Yeah. Okay, so 
There's my design equation. That's going to give me conversion over here. I have tau. Tau is a constant. It's known. K. What about K? A is a function of t. So I'm going to erase some of these terms here. So k is a function of the temperature through the expression k is equal to this is one of the notes. K is equal to, let's call this initial temperature at K naught at 350 Kelvin. So we can write my actual rate constant at any other temperature is K naught multiplied by the exponent of E over R 1 over T naught times 1 over T. K is a function of temperature. We can emphasize by writing K capital T. So what's my plan? How's my plan modified now? Can I solve? I've got two equations now. I've got this equation up here for my energy balance. And I've got this equation down here, which is my mass balance. <clears throat> my unknowns are concentration and temperature, two equations, two unknowns. So I've got a, con a concentration, uh, uh, sorry, conversion, I should say, not concentration. So conversion x in this equation. But I have k here, which is a function of temperature. In this equation up here, I've got t, which is my one output variable, and x, my other output variable. So two equations, two unknowns. This is capital Greek kappa. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's this, this guy over here. Okay, so two equations, two unknowns, one of them nonlinear. This one is also, yeah, this one's linear, this is nonlinear. Strategy to solve that. Yeah, that the left and the right hand side match up. But we need a good guess. 
What's a good initial guess for temperature? 350, why do you say that? So we've got my inlet to the reactor is 450 Kelvin. Is this temperature going to be greater than 450? Less than 450. My coolant is coming in at 300. Okay, so T ambient was given at 300 Kelvin. So there's a 150 Kelvin degree difference between what this coolant is and what this inlet is. But what is inside the reactor here? Right, so here I'm mixing. What's the temperature inside here going to be? It's T. The same temperature leaving is the temperature inside the reactor. That's the rule for CSTRs. So temperature at the outlet, greater or smaller than T naught? Greater? Who says greater? Who says smaller? Okay. Why smaller? Okay, ambient temperature of 300 coming in is going to take some of that heat away. Even though it's exothermic, right, we expect the reason for cooling is so that this doesn't go even greater than 450. I can't change 450, it's given to me, it's what my feed comes in at. The use of cooling jacket is to remove heat from the system. We expect that it removes at least enough heat to prevent this reaction from getting carried away or to make sure that it doesn't go above 450. So we probably will be safe with an upper limit on our gas of 450. Probably I would even start a little lower than that. But it's certainly I wouldn't go above 450. Let's take a look also at a lower bound for temperature. So 300 is a good lower bound. Any other guesses for a lower bound on temperature? Yeah. There's a better, there's a, the 300 is a good initial one, but there might be a better one. Would we calculate first put TC in and make sure it doesn't cancel out? Okay, calculate first what TC is, and then make sure it doesn't cancel out. Should it be more than that? Should be more than TC. Yeah. Okay. Won't get a negative action. And if you can't get a negative conversion, here. so the left and right hand side, we know that conversion must be positive. So T minus TC, T must exceed TC. Okay. So that's a, the, so that's that's exactly how you do it. Guess and check. We've got good initial guesses now. At least exceed TC, but it will be smaller than T naught. So let's take a look at what some of those numbers actually are. <laughs> what, uh, so someone calculate, or both, everyone here calculate kappa, everyone calculate TC. Okay, so kappa is U, an image we were given. 
divided by CP naught, also divided by FA naught. So we know FA naught as well, let us give it. Any values in CP naught? Probably too short a time for you to, to go ahead and help there, but let's just uh, work through that one together. CP naught, remember, was defined as theta i times CPI. Theta i is the ratio of the feed flow rate. So in this case, that writes out to FA naught over FA naught multiplied by CPA. Plus, if I expand that summation, FB naught over FA naught multiplied by CPB. But FB naught was zero. So we don't have any flow of B coming into the system. So that term doesn't involve. And then finally, we have a inert. So FI naught over FA naught times CPI. So I really only have two terms in that summation because one of them falls away, this is the B term. There's no flow of B into the system. So if I sum in those values, it's 1 times CPA, which was 125, plus FI naught over FA naught is also 1. It came in an equal mode of flows multiplied by CPI is 85. So that CP naught term is equal to 210. I recognize some people with the back can't see, so I'm going to put it all over here. It's a, I've moved up here, so theta i CPI is equal to 210 joules per minute health. So Kappa then substituting in those values gives you a value of 2.05. So UA was equal to 560 divided by FA naught 1.3 CP naught of 210 gets you a kappa of 2.05 TC which is a lower bound for our temperature, can then quickly be calculated once we have kappa. So Tc is kappa 2.05 times the T ambient, 300, plus T naught, 450, all divided through by 1 plus kappa. and you can get a TC value of 349 Kelvin. So essentially what I have now is a good lower bound for temperature is 349, a good upper bound is 450. And that is if we had assumed that temperature was 400 Kelvin. Just to take a look at what happens there. Okay. So if I assume that my initial guess, T, is equal to 400 Kelvin, which we would find that if you substitute in into this equation up here, Conversion x is equal to t210 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by 3.05, that's 1 plus kappa, plus 51 Kelvin divided by minus, minus 31400. We would have got a conversion of 1.04. Okay, so that quickly tells you that that high temperature of 400 Kelvin is, is excessive. Okay, so this equation, uh, I should have written it uh, symbolically over there. This is, I've simply taken this equation over here, substituted in CP naught, 210, 1 plus kappa, T minus TC, 
uh, solved for x the conversion. So this is from the energy now. So from that energy balance, I would have quickly realized that values of 400 Kelvin is, uh, is too large, or too high. I would get conversions exceeding one. So already now, I'm now quite quickly I'm bounded by two very reasonable temperatures. 400 Kelvin is too high, 349 is the smallest I can go. So I'm somewhere between that 50 degree range. So the main purpose of this evening's class is just to show you the line of thinking to solve these problems. Tomorrow we'll, we'll do a few more iterations and we'll get 